we may have as many as a million to three million people who could lose uh, their homes. Not because they lost their jobs, not because the economy collapsed, but because they got bad deals on mortgages. I think that the American people need to understand these things take a while to play out, but uh, as they play out and as investors get a better understanding of these securities, uh, liquidity will return to normal. That was from our own Steve Leisman's exclusive interview with Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson this morning. I'm John Harwood sitting in for Larry Kudlow. The question of the day is whether the, or not the Fed will cut interest rates, or rather not whether they'll cut interest rates, but when. Here to debate, Christian Weller, senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, and of course CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leisman. We've got an exclusive interview with him right now. Steve, talk about the takeaway from that interview with Paulson. Was it that this is going to work itself out? or that it's going to take time to work itself out? It was, it's going to take time to work itself out and ultimately will, but, but I'm going to put together Paulson's comments with a speech uh, made today by Fed Richmond Federal Reserve President Jeffrey Lacker, uh, John, where, where the appearance from both of these guys, these aren't the two last guys with their say, uh, there are others who will have a say here, but that the preference right now is to do as little as possible on the government side to have the markets as much as possible work their way out of this with a minimal of government interference. There was an interesting comment by Lacker, and, and Paulson also echoed this. We don't want to get in the way of the risk reassessment process. That's obviously a euphemism for the credit crunch we're out there going on right now. The but moral hazard. The moral right. hazard. They don't want to get in and bail out people who took risks they shouldn't have and also encourage further risk taking. So there's a minimalist approach from Washington, both Constitution Avenue where the Fed is and also over where the Treasury is. Christian, is that the right approach, or when you've got one to three million homeowners, as uh, uh, Chris Dodd referred to, facing the possibility of losing their homes, do they need to be more active? Well, at this point, I think the government needs to be more active. You have basically two problems here, and we focus really only on one. That's the liquidity crisis, the overreaction in the market. But fundamentally, you have a real problem on your hands. You had excesses in the markets that ultimately led to the foreclosure crisis that we're in. And a lot of homeowners are losing their, uh, their homes, and that's weakening the economy. Now, just like we had excess on the upside, we're probably going to get excesses on the downside, meaning too much tightening in the market. And I think there's room for the government to step in. I think the first thing is, to really find workable solutions for workouts so that homeowners can either get orderly out of their homes that they can no longer afford or that they can stay in their homes with a different mortgage. I think that's the first step. The second one is really to, to see whether we can, in the mortgage market, not in the overall market, but in the mortgage market, reestablish some sort of liquidity. And then the third step is to really rethink how can we avoid a problem like this in the future? We have time to discuss that, but I, I think there's a real room here for both Congress and the administration to have a constructive discussion. I, I think this is not really a place for the Fed to play an active role. Well, let me ask you about the active role. Senator Dodd seems to expect that the Fed is going to cut its target rate in September, even though he didn't explicitly call for that. The market seems to want that. The Fed isn't so enthusiastic. What do you think about that issue, that September meeting? Well, it's a little bit of uh, a um, difficult situation. If the Fed cuts interest rates, we're basically go back to where we started. We're, we're tr relying on debt to drive us out of the this, this slump, and, and I don't think that that's necessarily the best way. Um, the other part is also what kind of signal does it send to the market if the Federal Reserve Bank now cuts interest rates? It, it may fuel an underlying panic in the market again and, and ultimately create more problems than solutions. I, I think really the problem at this, the, the, the ball is now back in the court of the administration and Congress, and they have to find a solution to really Christian, stabilize so the market. Market. Panic the market or calm the market? Well, I think it's it's time to sort of get past the idea, John, of, of, of whether or not uh, a certain action that's needed for help will be seen as a desperate sign. It strikes me that, that both the Fed and the Treasury, when I listen to them speak, they've decided that where we are right now, we can handle. And there's no anticipation of the next shoe to drop. It seems to me that the Fed and the Treasury should get ahead of this curve. For example, John, I just want to kind of throw this at you. Mm -hmm. You listened to the Paulson interview. I was struck by how kind of lackadaisical he was about the idea of raising the cap on, on, these, uh, on what's a conforming loan. If they did that tomorrow, that would have a meaningful impact out there in the markets. Right now, you can only have a conforming loan, one guaranteed by the government of $417,000. There's talk about that being 
allocating $500,000. That's something we need to have done yesterday, given the shape of markets today. That's one. Two is it strikes and me and that you've got, by the way, Democrats yeah. Dodd, Chuck Schumer, right. Carney Frank all pushing for that. Christian, is that a That's good idea? A get ahead well, I think it's, it's exactly the right thing to, to talk about how we, we have a fundamental problem in the real estate market, in the mortgage market, and that's where the solution comes. The Federal Reserve Bank just throwing out money there is not necessarily going to go where it needs to go. And I think really increasing the size of jumbo loans. Do you buy the help. moral hazard argument, by the way? No, I, 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 I think here um, the, the Fed, I, I think generally at this point, it, it, the argument is for the Federal Reserve Bank, uh, for the government to step in to help people out. I, I don't think you're going to create a moral hazard problem because you're ultimately helping the people most in need and ultimately yeah. helping the economy. And, and I, it just strikes me that the president could say, John, look, I will sign a bill when it arrives on my desk that raises that cap right there. That's one. The other thing is what we hear Paulson talking about is, look, we have had the bomb go off. We are ready to deal with the shock. It strikes me there are other markets that have yet to necessarily be hit by this credit crunch that will yet be hit, and it's time for the Fed, perhaps through rake up, perhaps through through doing more on the discount one, to get ahead of potential problems in these markets. Like we haven't talked at all about commercial real estate, and we know there's been an excessive financing there. What about that market right now? Steve, let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, now that this event's occurred, what are the odds that we go into the 2008, the last year of the Bush presidency, U.S. presidential election, what are the odds that we'll be in recession at that time? I can answer from economists who I've spoken, I don't necessarily forecast this myself, but I would say that they're much higher than they were. I've heard some economists put it at 50-50. The general thinking is, by the way, there's sort of always a kind of one in three chance or one in four chance, given where we are in the business cycle, that we'll be in recession. That's not saying anything. So anything above 25 is a greater chance than we had before. I've heard 50-50. I've heard 75 or greater. The, the real answer, John, comes how regulators right now and policymakers right now deal with the challenges facing them from the credit crisis. Christian, higher than 50 50 or lower? No, I think 50 50 is probably right on the mark. I, I think the chances of a recession have certainly increased in the last few weeks. Um, the market definitely can take this down. Uh, we haven't really found a replacement for the residential real estate market to drive the economy forward, and the current credit crunch can make situa the situation much worse. We'll have to leave it there. Thanks, Christian Weller. Thanks, Steve Leisman. Up next, House Member.